Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new video. My name is Babsy, and oh my god, we are soon at 100 subs. What am I supposed to do then, huh? I would have to do a giveaway or something to pay you guys back for looking at my videos and subscribing and being there for me. But enough of that. You're not here to hear me rant. Today we're talking about the top 3 starter PvP cruisers. We're not talking about the faction cruisers today. So, the first one we're gonna talk about that I do enjoy flying at times is the Stabber Fleet Issue. This ship is really good. Trust me, it has pretty much everything. It has a lot of speed, decent tank, but you kind of use the speed as your tank. So yeah, it's, it's good. And you still have proper DPS and room for tackle. Well, you only have three medium slots, but still, you can fit a decent tackle on it. The Stabber Fleet Issue is the number one cruiser you should fly, period. Could explain why so many people are actually flying it. It is pretty good. Next ship we're gonna talk about is nothing less than a Blackbird. No, I'm just kidding. This ship is terrible, so never mind. We're talking about the Caracal Navy issue. This ship is also pretty good. Not as fast as the Stabber Fleet issue, but you can apply your damage very good. Especially if you're using rapid launchers. And I recommend that you use rapid launchers. Even though the Caracal Navy issue is a bit slower than the Stabber Fleet issue, you will still have enough speed. Especially if you combine this with an afterburner or a micro warp drive. But remember, the micro warp drive will eat your cap, and when you have it on, your signature radius will be as big as a battle cruiser or even bigger. So only use it when needed. Also, worth noting that this doesn't only apply to the Caracal Navy issue. This applies to every ship that you are flying that uses a micro warp drive. Okay? <laughs> I usually only use a micro warp drive when I try to get away or get in range. Remember that, because that could save your life. Really. Third and last ship that we're talking about today is... I want to talk about the drone ship here, because I know a lot of people fly, fly drone ships. I, I'm thinking the Arbitrator is pretty decent, because it has a bigger brother, the Covered Ope version, and they are pretty solid. But... The Vexor Navy issue is also a pretty good drone ship. So it's kind of up to you here. I would say they are kind of equal, depending on how much E-War you are going to use. If you're going for some tracking disruptors, use the Arbitrator. Because tracking disruptors could be pretty useful at times as well. But if you don't want to go that route, you should go with the Vexor Navy issue instead. I enjoy fitting the drone ships almost the same way all the time. You fit drones, obviously, and then you use missiles on your high slots. Because missiles never miss. Sometimes they do very, very low damage, but it's still a hit, not a miss. I'm kidding, of course. Sometimes missiles could be bad as well. But the good thing with missiles, or cannon weapons, if you like those more, they don't use any cap. And weapons that don't use cap, you can shoot them all day long without even worrying about your cap. When you have medium rapid launchers, you will hit frigates pretty good as well. And there is a lot of frigates flying around in space being just annoying. You know what I mean? Every little frigate is so annoying at times. It's so hard to kill them and you almost never catches them because they always run away. Come on frigates, step up your game, be a man. So by using medium rapids and let's say two webs and a disruptor or even a scrambler, you we'll have a pretty good chance of actually catching those little frigates. And you will also be able to apply some of your damage pretty good. Now I actually feel kinda ashamed for not talking about a laser ship. So let's talk about the Omen Navy issue real quick here. It's still a pretty good ship. Not as good as the other ones that we have been talking about today, but I think the problem lies within the lasers. Correct me if I'm wrong, but all the other weapons is superior to lasers right now. That's why I didn't really talk about the Omen Navy issue today. I'm not saying that it's bad, 
you can make it work. You just have to fiddle around a bit with your fitting. One good thing about laser ships today is a lot of people are actually flying shield tanks. And the people who's flying shield tanks usually have one or two reds. And shield tanks tend to always be low on EM resist. What damage does the lasers do? That's right, EM and thermal, but EM. So you will do more damage on shield tanks compared to an armor tank. That's worth noting, isn't it? So if you're into lasers, give the omen issue a try. Set it up like any other ship with uh, the right tackle, two webs and a scram. Tank it as you want, go full glass cannon and just blap things. It's up to you. Try it, because it might be fun, right? Even I got excited now about the Omen Navy issue, and I have pretty good laser skills, so I might even give it a try. I'll let you know how it goes. This is just my two cents, or three cents, because I said three ships, or four ships. Doesn't matter. You, you get my point. If you're new at PvP, you should definitely give one of these ships a try. Remember, don't fly something you can't afford to lose, because that will hurt your wallet, and in time, your spirit. And when your spirit gets down, PvP will not be fun anymore. If you guys enjoyed this little video, feel absolutely free to leave a like and a comment telling me your favorite cruiser. No, don't mention faction cruisers, because that's not really what we're talking about today. We're gonna do another video about the faction cruisers one day. And if you're new here, you should also consider subscribing, because we are so close to 100 subscribers. Jesus Christ. Okay. You guys have an awesome day, night, or evening, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Goodbye!